I am now joined by Brad One Punch Pickett. Brad is coming off a successful flyweight debut at this weekend's UFC, UFC Fight Night 38 against Neil Seary. Brad, thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for having me on. Uh, congratulations on the successful drop down to flyweight. Thank you. Uh, it was obviously a, a very exciting fight, but before we talk about the fight, I just want to talk a little bit about, about the build-up. Now, initially you were due to fight Ian McCall, who's quite well-known in the UFC and, of course, quite well-known. I mean, I think before the UFC took on flyweights, he was he was considered the number one flyweight in the world. Uh, how disappointing was it for you in, in the, replace of oppo- uh, the late replacement of the opponent? I was very disappointed, to be honest, because uh, for me, it, it was a matchup that I really liked. He was a very... He was a high-ranked opponent, and uh, for, for me, it was like he would have made a lot more uh, title, you know, implications after this fight if I'd have won it. So uh, I was disappointed that that, that that he pulled out. You know, uh, it kind of like yeah, annoyed me a little bit. There was quite a little bit of a. There seemed to be a little bit of banter in the build-up to the fight as well. So how how eager were you for the fight? Um, well, to be honest, like uh, I've been fighting for, for years, and I've never really had. Everyone I've fought in those in those years has been an opponent to me, nothing more. Um, and because uh, the reason being, that I'm, I'm not really much of a trash talker. I respect everyone I fight, and uh, not that I'd command it or demand it, but most people I fight kind of respect me and don't talk trash about me either. Um, but I don't know. So of course, Sim to find it in, in, in his way to start talking a lot of smack about me on, on the underground and stuff like that, and. Um, yeah, he kind of like it didn't really get to me too much leading up to the fight because at the end of the day, I, I had a chance of redemption at the end of the uh, end of it all, end of the fight camp to fight him and punch him, and then you know that that would be me getting my my redemption, being able to punch him in the face and beat him up at the end at the end. So it didn't really bother me he, he, him talking uh, without a smack. But then what what did really bother me is that then he pulled out, which you know. I'm not saying I'm not saying he wasn't injured or anything like that because injuries happen. But then once you pull out of the fight, don't then continue to start talking smack about me because like it, I I got no way of getting my my redemption then because you've you've took that away from me. So I got really annoyed. That's why he, in the tweet messages we went back and forth. I was just saying to him like, you know, you can talk as much crap about me as you want as if you're gonna fight me. But if you're not going to find me, just just shut up. I don't want to hear you. You know, you, you know that, that that's what kind of like the messages we had back and forth. Because for me, it was old news. Like once you, for me, he's the type of he's the type of fighter who likes the limelight and like the glitz and the glam and all that sort of stuff. So when he pulled out of the fight, he obviously he wants people to carry on talking about him, and you know he's getting, so he wants to get still wants to get some media attention and that sort of stuff. So he wanted to talk some talk some more crap. So. I was just like, I don't want none of it, man. Shut up. I'm not fighting you anymore. I, you know, I'm over you. So that, that's what that was about, really. Would you be interested in, interested if they were to reschedule the fight, or would you rather just move 100%, on and get... 100%. 100%. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, obviously I would like to have a, a, a title shot against Demetrius Johnson, and if they offered me that, I would never turn that down. But I can't really claim for one after after this weekend I don't think I performed too great uh, and also you know it, it wasn't like a top ranked opponent so and there's a lot more people within my division probably diver- uh, deserve another shot so I, now I need to rack up a couple more wins sort of thing uh, so for me Ian McCall would be perfect but a perfect matchup for me uh, I would like the matchup before um I would like to rekindle that, and uh, and we've got some unfinished business that had to do it. But yeah, again, I don't know how injured he is and how long he's going to be out. Because also, I don't want to hang around for ages. I want to keep myself active and get some sort of momentum going. So I want to fight as early as like maybe in Berlin uh, or in May or uh, in um, July, maybe in Ireland. Now, of course, Neil Seary stepped in, and Neil Seary's been very big on the domestic scene. Uh, he's big in Europe. He was he was the Cage Warriors flyweight champion. What were your thoughts on facing Neil Seary? Uh, for me, I, to be honest, I would have fought anybody. I would have fought you know, for some guy from, from from the crowd. You know, I was just happy to get the, get an opponent and to save that event. You know, fighting in, in the O2 uh, in my hometown was an opportunity I could not pass by. So I was just happy that I got a chance, you know, a chance to fight someone, you know. So um, 
I was happy that he uh, he, he came in and uh, as an opponent wise, I didn't know much too much of him about him before. I know he's very game, and I, I knew that his strength is obviously is he's striking. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, to me, it's a little bit of an unknown entity to be honest. Now, going into the fight as well, because he wasn't as well known on the world scene, do you think a lot of people kind of wrote him off before the fight happened? Because he was a lot tougher, that I think, than what people gave him credit for. Uh, of course they do, because then, you know, people look at his record and, you know, he, he obviously had a lot of losses and stuff like that, and they just completely write him off. And obviously, with fighting me, and then everyone knows who I am uh, and stuff. So, yeah, it was, it, to me, it was a lose-lose situation. If I didn't do nothing apart from... If I knocked him out in the first 30 seconds, people would have just said, oh, told you he should have even been there in, in there with him. And anything beyond that, he will get crack credit for. So uh, it always, I was always in a lose-lose situation. The only thing I could come away with that is uh, is, is a victory, uh, uh, which I did. And, uh, and uh, it wasn't, you know, I didn't underestimate him in any way. And anyone fighting in the UFC is going to be good. And also with him uh, having absolutely no expectations and no pressure, he could just go out there and leave all the line and have fun, you know. Did anything about Neil Seary's uh, fight fight style surprise you? No, not particularly. Um, uh, no, no, yes, a little bit. Like, when I took him down, uh, when I seen some footage of him, he was a little bit more active of With me, he kind of, like, surprisingly, he tried to hold on to me and look for a stand-up, you know. Uh, he didn't really attack me off, off, off his back. It kind of surprised me a little bit. It's funny because I spoke to Neil as well and he did say that, that he was trying to get the stand-up and obviously you've picked up on that as well. Now, we're in the striking exchanges, uh, it looked like he was holding his own with you and he was landing, you with, landing with some good punches and then you obviously reverted to your wrestling. Was that your game plan or did you revert to the wrestling because of, of, the, of the way the stand-up was going? Basically, I wasn't afraid of his stand-up in one way or whatsoever. Uh, I got hit with some good shots. I didn't hit him with many great shots, I don't think. But I was throwing hard and I felt comfortable. And if, if you can understand, like, I never, ever, ever am uh, scared of standing with any opponent. Uh, I've never been not knocked out. Don't get me wrong, I've been dropped and stuff. But I've never, ever, I like to stand. That is me. I love being in those fights. But I need to win a fight. And I had I needed to win, so in my eyes, I needed to get takedowns and get some top time, just because the way the judges score fights, I needed to make sure I need, need a round. Uh, when it's just a stand-up fight, and it would say me and him, I, I didn't think he was out-striking me, I thought it was pretty even, and because it's pretty even, it could go either way. So I need to make sure, no, I'm going to win this round, so I take him down and get some top time, and, and just... It's just me being a kind of a fighter and knowing how to win a fight. Yeah, you've got to be smart, like you said. There's no point just standing there. If it, if you're, I mean, I, I I could not in a million years afford to lose that fight. So I need to make sure I won it. So if it did take me out, need to have to take him down and, and, and get some top time and try and secure some takedown to, 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 to win it. That's what I had to do. Yeah, that that absolutely makes sense. Uh, you, like you say, you had you had to win this fight. You were already on a lose lose yeah, situation. Yeah, I mean, like, some people thought, yeah, I was scared of. Like, no, not at all, man. If you want to arrange a boxing match, me and him could just have a boxing match. It doesn't bother me. But you know, I needed to, so I needed to take him down to score points. And end of the day, it's MMA. You have to be prepared for anything. And if I fought, if I was fighting some black belt in jiu-jitsu, I'd still take that guy down. You know, he's, he's ever mate. If I just stand up the whole time, he knows what I'm doing. If I take someone down, then he keeps him guessing. He doesn't know if I'm going for a takedown. If my level changes, he doesn't know if I'm going to hit him to the body or I'm going to take him down. If I just stand up the whole time, if I change my level to hit, he knows I'm going to hit him into the body. So you have to keep your opponent guessing as well. Now, the other thing I wanted to pick up on, of course, like you said, this was your, you mentioned about the London crowd. This was the first time you fight in, in the UFC in London, which is your hometown. I mean, I was there. The The reaction from the crowd when you come out was amazing. What was that like for you? Yeah, man, it was great. But I ain't going to lie, it gave me a little bit of extra pressure in a way that I need to win this fight. You know, I can't get beat in front of my hometown. 
So a little bit more pressure on me, but but pressure that you know I handled quite well, and uh, I was happy. At the press conference, it was it was talked about Demetrius Johnson, and you also mentioned about uh, coaching on the uh, Ultimate Fighter. Uh, so mm-hmm. where where goes from here? What do you think your chances are of getting a fight with Demetrius Johnson, or do you think you need to go out, like you said, and get a few more wins first? Uh, two things. One, if they offer me a shot, um, I wouldn't say no. But I believe there's other people in there, like Ali. I can't even say his name. Ali back in that Yeah, I think he, he he deserves a shot. You know. Uh, he's been doing well so like I say I can't really come into that weight class uh, have one win and demand a, uh, uh, a title shot yes I know I didn't beat Demetrius Johnson before um, but I can't I can't really go in there with old accolades and demand things you know so uh, I, I, and also for myself I need to go in there if I do get a title shot in myself believe that I've earned my title shot you know I, I deserve this rather than thinking I've got to uh, give me, you know. So I know that Dana White, Dana White loves me and, and that sort of stuff, but but I don't want any favoritism and bias. I've worked for absolutely everything I, I've had in my career, and when I get things, I appreciate it. If I get handed things to me, you don't appreciate it as much. So uh, I like the way my career has gone, and I've worked hard at it, and, uh, you know, so that's what I mean. I, I want to maybe get another win, another two wins or something like that. And when I have my title shot, I believe I deserve my title shot and go in there and, and try and get the win. Yeah, right, absolutely. Now, the other thing that was touched on quite a bit during the week, uh, and then you mentioned it briefly again in the uh, in the press conference, uh, was about them being a, 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 a tough, either a European or UK tough. And you mentioned about coaching on Ultimate Fighter. Is that something you'd like to do, even though it would mean a layoff from fighting? Um. I don't think it'd be a massive layoff from fighting, yeah, and yes, I'd 100% you know love to do it tough because it, for me it's, it's a natural natural progression, um, and uh, you know I, I want to become a coach, so for me it's an absolute natural progression for me, and obviously it's great exposure, and um, um, it was great exposure, and uh, and uh, I'll. I'll um, Okay, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Um, sorry. Yeah, for me, it's like, uh, you know, great experience and a natural progression for me as, uh, as a fighter to become a coach. And uh, I, was, I just love, I love, just love the opportunity to, to, to do one, you know, before my career uh, as a... Uh, would you like to do like a, a UK stroke European one, so one on this side, or would you like to do one that's in North America, or don't you mind? I really mind to be honest, but I, I, me personally, what well, I think would be a good one, um, I don't know, uh, uh, it's not my decisions and stuff like that, but what I think would be really good is if they, you know, I know that they had the first you know, UFC event on Channel 5, I think, because it, how it helped America so much, is if they could get a, a, a Channel 5 um, tough, you know, and have it from in the UK, on UK soil, maybe England versus Ireland, England versus Europe, or something along those lines, or uh, and uh, do a tough in the UK on Channel 5 TV, which I think will help catapult it to the next level within this uh, the country. Yeah, that would be, be, that's getting me excited, that would be amazing. Well, Brad, I really appreciate you giving me your time today. It's been, I mean, I've, I've had the pleasure of speaking to you before and it's been a pleasure again today. No problem at all. Thanks and, for having me on, guys. And congratulations and I, I look forward to seeing you compete again. Thank you. Before we let you go, I just want to give you a chance to do any shout-outs. So would you like to mention your Facebook and Twitter for everybody and then also any sponsors, friends, family you want to shout-out as well? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, one, as in the word one, O-N-E, underscore punch, uh, that's my Twitter. My Facebook, uh, I have a uh, fan page. And my actual, my personal Facebook is completely maxed out. I can't have anyone else. And I'd like to uh, thank uh, my, my my ongoing sponsors: Positive Energy Drink, um, Venom, G Form, uh, Primal Feast, Funky Gums, and uh, yeah, uh, and Wix Racing. Uh, that, that you know, uh, appreciate you know all their help and my two training camps, American Top Team. And um, and uh, Team Titan in North London.